Yeah, definitely. And I think the first thing I do want to call out is that imposter syndrome um, will always be there, right? Like even when you think about women who are really put together, who are doing things really well, that is still there for them. And that is because, you know, as you know, someone progress in their career, they keep on taking new challenges or new areas or exposed to new opportunities. And those are things that, um, you know, my self included, I've never done before. And that's where a lot of times imposter syndrome comes back is like, why me um, taking on these new opportunities or this promotions? Am I really there? So it'll always be there. Um, but I think the thing is a lot of times what has worked for me is that um, telling myself that, you know, there are all these new opportunities, but you are the person that's taking on this challenge now. So you are deserving and you are the person that's taking this promotion now. So people have seen what you can do and recognize that. So I think that really helps. Another thing is also whenever I have self doubt, I pull myself back with something I'm good at to focus me for the moment. Right. For example, if I'm in a conflict with uh, someone or something happens where I'm doubting myself, I typically pull myself back at, you know, I'm really good at solving problems. Right. And that really brings me back to the moment, to things that I can do to make forward progress and to action on something versus just thinking in my head about am I deserving of doing this now? Uh, and that has really helped me. And another thing is just, you know, give myself a worst case scenario, right? Think about, you know, what is the worst that can happen? What's the worst that can go wrong? And when you're okay with that, then just go and do it and just, you know, do your best. And uh, you are there uh, right now and you are deserving of this chance and opportunity. Absolutely. Those are, are great pieces of insight and um, words of wisdom for sure. Thanks, Linda. And Shafina, I know this is an area that you know lots about, so please share your thoughts on this. Absolutely. And I echo, uh, you know, everything that everyone has said. So I'm going to try not to repeat everything. Um, but, you know, just to touch on what Jenny and Linda said, writing things down uh, is really the start. Uh, so, I've learned this from working at BDO, they've really embedded this in the culture, is to keep a list of things that you love to do and things that you loathe doing. Um, and refer back to that regularly because you will start to notice patterns in the work that you're doing. So the work that you love doing, you'll see that you're doing really, really well. And the things that you loathe doing, you kind of know you're scratching the surface, you're making an effort because you have to but you actually love doing certain things because you're really great at those things. And those things that you love doing should give you confidence. So when you are speaking to clients or you're speaking to colleagues, don't think that you need to know everything and you need to be the master in everything. Um, it's just really important to have confidence in what you know and what brings you joy and happiness in learning. You know, when we put ourselves out on social media, we're prone to negative feedback. Um, and same thing in, in, the, in your careers. There are going to be times where you'll receive negative feedback, but you know, I just say, don't spend too much time worrying about the negative feedback. If there is some constructive criticism that you can take from it, absolutely do that. Like, think about what they said, um, but don't don't sit there and mull on it for a long time. You know, pick yourself up and and get back to doing what you love. And you know, just being yourself will come naturally if you understand what makes you really happy. So. That's kind of my advice, and I've recently gone through that, actually. Um, I was recently awarded an award by Microsoft, and I felt like I may not have deserved this, but as I spoke to colleagues and I spoke to my clients, you know, they, they really reiterated why Microsoft selected me, and, um, you know, something like Alice, what Alice said was, they actually took the time to, to recognize my achievement and, and actually understand understand where it what it meant to me and it, it just it made it feel better and I'm, I'm actually able to to enjoy the award as opposed to feeling a little undeserving of it 
That's awesome. Thank you, Shafina. And you are absolutely deserving of it 100%, right? And that's a very prestigious award that Shafina received. And again, well deserved, absolutely. Um, so, you know, just to summarize here, you know, there's a lot of, you've got to have that confidence in yourself and, you know, believe in yourself. Often when you're the only woman in the room, remember, don't look at it as you're the only woman in the room. It's um, you're in the room. So you're in the room for a reason, right? People are looking to you for your specialty, your expertise. You have some value to add, believe that you have that value to add. And it's not just to fake it till you make it, but um, certainly as I've taken over additional leadership roles and expanded my role over the years, um, I had moments of having to learn an entire part of the business that I didn't know or taking on another 100 people and what does that mean and what do I need to do? And um, rather than looking at it as the imposter syndrome or worrying that maybe I didn't deserve that, um, I just got comfortable with being uncomfortable all the time, right? It comes back to one of the things that Linda said, which was, you know, these, these opportunities, you know, everybody goes through this in a new opportunity and you just don't know what you don't know. And that creates some discomfort. And one of the times that I had taken on a, a big step in my, my career in a part of the leadership role, I had brought a few of my senior managers along, which means that they had new opportunities and it was a new role for them, also happened to be women in technology. Um, and one of my senior managers had said to me that, uh, I just, you know, I'm scared. I'm scared because I knew this product really well and now I'm moving into this other group with you, but um, you know, I'm scared because all the things that I became a real expert in, I have to relearn all over again. And she truly had that imposter syndrome. And uh, what I suggested to her, one, one coping mechanism, I guess, that, that I had inherited myself or took on myself was every time you want to say, I'm scared, just replace the word scared with excited. And I'm excited to learn new things. I'm excited about the new team. I'm excited about this new opportunity. And it is a psychological mind shift. If you, you know, when you actually have the same kind of adrenaline rush from fear as excitement. And so it's up to you. How do you want that energy to be? Do you want that to be a positive energy or a negative energy? So that was my advice to her. I think that it's worked. It certainly worked for me. And, um, you know, something that uh, I'll, I'll put out there, hopefully, you know, others might take away from that as well. So, you know, I saw in part of the, the Q&A as well, just around noticing that our panel are also um, all visible minorities, too. So, you know, not only being women in technology, but visible minorities and as well. And, you know, which might have also impacted your journey and what you've experienced in the room with other individuals and that sort of thing throughout your career. So maybe we could talk about um, adversity and what we've experienced. And again, I'd love to go round table because I think there's probably lots of stories to share around what we've seen and perhaps overcome. So we'll go round table again. Jenny, if it's okay, I'll start with you on that question. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think I'll share a story first and then I'll talk about what I've learned over the years. So when I first started university, um, Waterloo has a co-op program and I got a lot of job interviews my first co-op round and I had a lot of male friends when I first started off in CS, didn't really know any other females to be honest in my first year. And some of them said to me, hey, you only got that job because you're gonna be a diversity hire. Like they need females. So they're only hiring you to be a, like, their token diversity female engineer. And that really hurt because I was like, oh, wow, like, you know, navigating back through the imposter syndrome, I was like, is that true? Like, am I not good enough? Am I here just to be like a representation of some sort of quota that companies are trying to hit? Um, and then throughout my career, I just kept feeling that. And like, you know, some people would say things that kind of like hinted to this thought and I would feel like really uncomfortable and just very unhappy also because I was like, what am I even doing here? Or like, why do people say this about me? Um, so I think throughout all that, I learned that the biggest lesson that I've learned is to be confident in myself and my abilities, because at the end of the day, I am my biggest advocate and that I know the source of truth for myself. And with that truth, I can try to build a support network that also knows the truth and can advocate with me um, and for me as well. 
So I feel like it's been really important. Um, so when I started working, you know, there was a situation where I helped a team launch a big feature and the thanks went to my male colleague who wasn't even on the project instead of me. Um, and I talked to my manager about it. I was like, listen, like I know my role in this project. I know that I belong here. I know that my va contribution was valuable. And he completely agreed with me. And he was like, thank you for coming to me. Let me try to help you navigate this. And he was able to help me deal with this situation. So I think it was really important for me to one, be confident in myself and learn how to speak up in a way that I felt comfortable with. And that was through my manager in this case. And two, also build that network to help me in situations like this. That's great. Thank you, Jenny. Great messaging there around advocating for yourself, um, you know, finding the support of others and again, coming back to having confidence in yourself too. So that, that was great. Thank you. Um, Alice, how about you, your thoughts on this, this particular topic? Yeah, sure. Uh, so being a visible minority, being a woman. So my experience was kind of interesting that when I was an undergrad, I didn't really feel this very much. I just kind of studied and, and there were there were some unhealthy competition going on with some of my male <laughs> male fellow classmates, but they just brush it off. It's like, oh, I'm gonna do my thing. But as I progressed throughout uh, through my career, I definitely noticed there are fewer and fewer and fewer women like through grad school, uh, when I finally got a, do a postdoc and faculty position. So that kind of, in some sense, made the problem worse <laughs> along the way because there are fewer and fewer of, of other women that I can talk to. And I guess one thing I cope with is is that nowadays I really actively try to find a support system, try to find other women that I can talk with them. Because sometimes when you experience bias, when you experience doubt from other people, then you really need somebody else to, to talk with you and to say like, what is real, what is true and what is not, right? Like it, it really helps to have other people to confirm that yes, what you're experiencing is valid and yes, these are biases, <laughs> these are not true, and you should not um, use what other people say about you to define yourself. Um, and also something else along this line is that being a visible minority, um, oftentimes people will judge you by your appearance. Uh, so for me, I think the problem is slightly worse because I look young. So even if I right now I'm, uh, um, <laughs> I've been uh, since undergrad, it, it's been many years since I was an undergrad, but I still look like I'm a student. So often um, when I'm on campus participating in many different activities, people tend to mistake me as a student. People tend to mistake me as a graduate student. <laughs> so nowadays, uh, since I've experienced this, so much now that I develop, I develop a way to deal with this that I just accept it gracefully. I take it as a compliment. Thank you. Maybe you're complimenting me for the fact that I look young. Great. But on the other hand, I do try to assert myself as much as possible. So I let people know, oh, I've done these PhDs, postdoc, I'm extremely qualified to do whatever that uh, I'm here to do. And I yeah, I communicate a lot of these clearly to people. So once they know it, um, yeah, they don't they don't really underestimate me anymore. They don't really doubt that I'm not qualified for my position. So that's some of my experiences. That's great. Thank you, Alice. And I think that was a really important point that you made there about, you know, asserting yourself and it's about your presence, right? Your executive presence and not just the way that you look from a you know, you look young, and um, I know that I've certainly um, had that part in my career. I'm sure all of you have as well. And, um, you know, that kind of actually answers one of the other questions that came in just around how do you make sure that you're being heard in the room? And, you know, that presence and the, the um, uh, being assertive and, and showing confidence that you know what you're talking about has a lot to do with that as well. Um, so, Linda, over to you to answer the same question, please. Yeah, I think um, Jenny and Alice, they, they covered a lot um, really well. And maybe I would just cover about sort of uh, focus on the job um, itself. I think some of the adversity that I've gone through 
is that I've gone through um, major setbacks in my job, right? Meaning that um, the product that I work on that takes uh, maybe two years to develop, but at the very uh, last minute is canceled, right? Where it feels like, you know, all of my effort over the years have gone to uh, waste and I'm really not achieving a real impact at the end of a really long time. And I think uh, a lot of times people can relate to that. And I feel like um, in those cases, what I always seek is trying to understand the why and turn that into a learning opportunity for myself, right? Like for these instances, I've understood or the reason why the product is canceled, it's because it has served its purpose as negotiation leverage with some other company, which then brought in even bigger gain for the company, right? So in um, in this perspective, the, the product actually achieved its need, which is to gain more revenue for the company. And that has been great. And that's kind of the learning opportunity that I got out from there. And then from then on, I try to really understand, you know, the big picture, the sort of why we're doing the work that we are doing from then on to make sure number one i'm doing the right work for the company for the organization as well as i can then start surfacing this to help more people understand why they're doing the work they're doing yeah that's great thank you linda that was um great insight as well there um and shafina over to you i'm sure you also have seen some adversity in the workplace and things like that how how has your experience been there yeah i've actually experienced quite a bit so i know we don't have enough time to get into it entirely but i'm happy to share it offline um but just going back to you know being the only woman in a room in the oil and gas industry in technology as an indian um you know it's you certainly walk in the room not sure what to expect with people so uh just two two things that i always make sure that i have down that give me confidence when i have to walk into a room is a know what you're going to be talking about um so understand who you're meeting with um if you can google search them understand what their interests are understand their personalities um be prepared to walk into that room to contribute something um you know understand what the conversation is going to be like and and start to think about your perspective that you're going to offer now yes it it does require additional effort um but that just comes with you know being diverse is that we we do have to make that effort to stand out it's unfortunate but that's the reality of it um, and that will give you confidence if you're prepared for what you're walking into so just um you know just those are my two real quick pieces of advice just be aware of who you are meeting with um and one actually one other thing that i've really developed over my career is the ability to build relationships with people so you know Someone on the panel mentioned that maybe you were hired because you were trying to hit a diversity number. And that might be true. And that's okay. Use it to your advantage. But the minute that you're in that position, build relationships with the people around you in your circle. And the minute that you start to build relationships with people, they will naturally warm up to you. And you'll really start to find that sense of belonging once they really get to know you. So that's it. Okay. I, I love it. And uh, we're okay for, for time right now. We're going to go to 1225. So we've got about nine more minutes and maybe one more round of questions here. Um, I'll just share my own story, uh, an example, I guess, of some adversity that I've, I've certainly faced. I had this one, uh, this one, you know, this is a few years back where I was responsible for a piece of our technology business, a particular service line. And um, we had uh, a BDO global conference and this was again um, several years back but um, during that time there were that global conference was here in Canada so there was a lot of leaders from around the world from BDO that came to this conference 
And my boss at the time asked me if I would meet with a particular leader from another country who was trying to start up a very similar practice to the one that I had very well established in Canada. So it was one of the largest Microsoft um, uh, practices that, that existed in Canada that I was responsible for. And they wanted to learn what, you know, how could, how did we do that? Um, how did they get started? But this individual came from a country that was further behind than Canada, even at that time around women in leadership, um, diversity, women in technology, and um, and also maybe Alice a little bit of the and she looks kind of young, you know, situation too at the time, and uh, so I could tell with the handshake and the way that this individual looked at me that it was a what are you going to tell me, little girl? Is if I could actually write out what what was going on on his face, that's what I what I got from that that feeling. And so I started sharing, you know, as soon as I started talking, it took me about two minutes of talking about the practice and how to structure and how to get started, that all of a sudden his face and his demeanor changed. And it was a, oh my gosh, she knows some stuff. And, um, you know, I had a few takeaways from that. And at the end, there was a lot of, okay, um, I have a lot to learn from you, um, was the way that he was asking me, you know, for help and, and information, which it completely did a 180 in, you know, the, the span of two minutes of, of that engagement. Um, but I took a couple of different things away from that. Number one is, uh, yes, you know, of course, the have confidence that you know your stuff. As Shafina said, like, know what you're going to talk about. Um, you know, you're pulled in the room, again, for a reason. And so have that confidence in knowing that. But the other thing that I took away from that was that's not fair to me or other women that experience that. I should not be put in a situation where I am meant to feel that way. That's not fair. You put that on me. And that's that's a cultural and a societal change that needs to happen. So, you know, if you want to see the change, you have to be the change. And that's why, you know, it's really important for me as a woman in leadership, woman in technology, that we advocate for other women and that we make sure that, you know, we are, uh, I know there was a comment there, it's a heavy load to carry that comment to say, I'm paving the path, but, you know, I'm one of many women that will make an impact and um, you, need, you need to be part of that change as well. So that was what I wanted to share there. Maybe one last question and we are running out of time. I've got five minutes. So um, what I do want to do is one more round table and just ask, you know, one, what is the one piece of advice that you would give to young women starting out their career in technology? And we'll, we'll go in the same order if that's okay. Jenny, I'm going to pass it over to you first. Yeah, sounds good. Um, my one piece of advice I would just share to young women when they start off their career is something that a mentor had actually shared with me when I first started my job. So I think um, after like three months of starting at Instagram, I did this exercise that was called like creating my own personal board of directors. And it sounds really cheesy, um, but basically the exercise is creating and understanding who your support system is at work, within the industry, and in your personal life. So I think this has been touched on by a lot of us already throughout the various questions. But, you know, at times when you face adversity or when you feel not confident in yourself, it's important to have a good support system of different types of people in your network who can help you do different types of things. So, for example, there will be someone who will be there to support you when you have issues and you want to talk to someone about it and be like, hey, like, was this a microaggression? Hey, like, was this behavior behavior by my coworker justified? Like, hey, did I do something wrong in the scenario? You need that person to support you and talk you through these things. Then you also probably want someone who will champion you. Um, so someone who will look for opportunities for you, be like, hey, Sonia, like, I think you did really great at this panel last week. Would you love to moderate another panel next week? Or can you help lead this initiative? Um, because you have so much great experience in this industry so far. So they'll be the ones looking for new opportunities for you and helping you find new things to try out. And then, you know, you also want people within the industry that you can turn to that aren't um, people that you directly work with or even in your personal life that you can talk to for like emotional support related to your work. I think these types of people are really important when you start working because as you start like 
it's really scary starting a new job, switching over from being a student to being an industry, or I'm sure going into academia or becoming a teacher, um, you start to face new challenges. So it's really important to have a group of people there to help you through it, especially in the first few years. And I'm sure even as you grow into more senior roles, like you want those people there as well. That's great. Thank you, Jenny. And Alice, over to you, please. For sure. Uh, so I wanted to share uh, a piece of advice I got from my PhD advisor. So my PhD advisor around maybe my second year of PhD, she, she told me that, you know, I, based on her experience, if, uh, if you want to succeed, it's important to be a well-rounded person. So as a PhD student, that means that besides working on my research project, I also need, needed to develop other skills, such as being able to write papers to clearly explain my results, being able to give presentations to tell others about what kind of research that I worked on. So uh, here's my advice. No matter what stage of career you are right now, maybe you're a student, maybe you're starting out your career, Besides technical skills, which we really need right, in technology, I also urge you to spend the time to develop other skills, basically under the broad umbrella of communication skills. You need to be able to write well, you need to be able to do public speaking. I know it's really scary, but you know, you get used to it at some point. You need to be able to communicate with other people in general, about with your colleagues, which pe with people you don't even know. So these people, uh, these skills are really important regardless of whether you end up in academia or industry. I, I hope other people will agree with me on that. I love that, absolutely. Constant learning as well, so that's amazing. Uh, Linda, and we are running out of time, so we'll be quick and then we'll have a couple of answers. Yes, I will be really brief. Uh, I think with what Alice mentioned about learning new things, what you will find is that your time is very limited. So I would just say prioritization is very important, right? In terms of figuring out what is really important for you long-term and definitely spend time on that and what might be urgent that you need to do right away. And then also then just realign expectation with some of the things that are demanding your time that is urgent, but not really that important for your long-term success. I love that. I think that's a, it's definitely words of wisdom that we can live by, not just from a career perspective, but even in our personal life, having that prioritization so important. And Shafina, lastly from you, please. Yeah, I guess I'll just uh, summarize everyone's points into one, um, you know, create your board of directors, have that support system, be well-rounded, actually focus on communication skills. It's really important. And then prioritize the things that you want to really pursue. And that becomes your niche. And once you figure out a niche in the technology career, you can start to build your brand. And that's one piece of advice that Sonia gave me when I first started at BDO. And that's something I take to heart. And building my brand is actually what has really accelerated my career. So start to think of all of these great points and uh, you will succeed. That's great. Thank you, Shafina. Also really great advice. And uh, for me, the only thing that I just want to wrap up with is just to say that um, don't stress too much about where you start, right? Because doors will open up throughout your career. They certainly did for me. You don't know which way your life's going to pivot and which opportunities are going to present themselves throughout your career. I'm positive that when I registered to start my, to get my accounting designation, um, again, I did that not with the intention to do accounting all day long. I knew I didn't want to do that, but I knew I needed it foundationally. And over the years, I could not have possibly imagined that I would be running a 600 person, um, $100 million organization back then. So just know that things will unfold in your life and don't get too stressed today about the, you know, the, the decisions that, that you, you start off with. And so we're going to wrap things up again. I want to thank the panelists. This was such a great discussion. I hope everybody enjoyed it. I really do want to thank all of you for joining us as well. Um, we need more women in technology because we need diversity, diversity of thought. We need, um, you know, think about technology and how it's evolving so quickly and that it's formed around people and us doing the coding and developing and all of that, right, that, that gets developed. And without the diversity of thought, 
um, you know, it will have an, a negative impact or go in a direction that's not inclusive of our world. So, you know, keep that in mind. And, you know, again, for you women that are out there considering a field in, in technology, know that you are part of paving the path for the others that will come behind you and that you are also helping to lead the way. So thank you, everybody. Happy Saturday. I hope you enjoy the rest of your sessions today. Take care. Bye, everyone.